Yeah, Immersion is the name of the latest game and Samsung's brought concept to reality and created something special here. Build as your personal gaming theater, the new Samsung 55-inch Odyssey Arc 4K UHD 165Hz 1ms Quantum Mini LED Curved Gaming Monitor whew, that's a mouthful, boasts HDR10+, a variable refresh rate of up to 165Hz, all on a VA panel with 1 million to 1 native contrast ratio and over a thousand local dimming zones. I'm Joel Chikatu with MUO Reviews from MakeUseOf.com and this is the review of our premium pick, the Samsung Odyssey Arc 55 inch. Now before you can begin an Odyssey, you've got to rig your ship, or Arc in this case. Unboxing and setup began to highlight a thought that has stuck with me in my time using this innovative product. Just like its biblical namesake, the Arc functions best in twos. What do I mean by that? Well, to start, you'll need a partner to help set this up. The stand itself is a two-part beast that was surprisingly easy to hook up to the giant display. Snap it in and screw away at the six built-in screws. Now, once your arc is upright, all input and power is hooked up through the One Connect box. Supplied with select Samsung smart TVs, its inclusion here makes sense, especially as the arc blurs the line between television and monitor. The One Connect box comes with four HDMI 2.1 ports, one with eARC support, one Ethernet port, two USB 2.0 Type-A ports for peripherals, a USB Type-B port, and one optical for audio. And the box runs Samsung's Tizen OS to handle its connected features and the built-in Samsung Smart Hub. Navigating the ARC through your journey are your two shipmates, a standard television remote dubbed the ARC Remote and the ARC Dial. The ARC Dial looks cool, boxy, angular, industrial design, and it is so satisfying to spin that wheel. The dial has a directional clickable pad in its center and four flush clickable buttons atop. Both remotes charge via a solar cell, but also comes with a USB-C port. In the month I've used the Arc, I've never had to charge either remote, which is great. What's not so great though, is that the Arc dial doesn't allow you to control the volume of your inputs, which is a shame because it's really cool to be able to spin your way around to navigate within built-in apps, but why not translate that spinning to volume control? I'm not sure why Samsung made this choice, but it does mean that you need to have the Arc remote handy at all times. Both devices pair using Bluetooth, which is quick and easy. The Arc dial though does tend to need a bit of coaxing at times, as not every spin of the wheel translates to an immediate selection of the menu item. But it's not annoying and something you sort of learn. Now before we get to this gorgeous display and the game-changing vertical orientation the Arc can switch to, I want to take a moment to thank Samsung for one of the best audio systems ever to accompany a monitor. The Arc allows you to link a soundbar or speaker through Bluetooth, but really, who needs that with this setup? Samsung calls it Sound Dome technology. Four corner speakers and two center subwoofers provide a rich, deep, and rumbling sound in a 2.2.2 channel system with Dolby Atmos support. It may sound weird that my favorite feature of a display is its sound system, but Think about it, you want ultimate immersion, you need strong audio to go along with that visual experience. And what a visual experience the Odyssey Arc provides. Employing a thousand R curve, the R stands for radius, and a thousand R curve has been deemed by engineers as the optimal curvature for the human eye. This display just wraps and pulls you in to the experience. Using quantum mini LEDs, think thousands of microscopic LED lights densely packed to direct light accurately. The Arc deploys 4K UHD resolution at 3840 by 2160 and with brightness levels that top out at 1000 nits. It's incredible, and Samsung's recommended viewing distance of 80 centimeters has all this visual goodness right in your face. It's wild, but my eyes never got tired of staring at this screen. Your experience may vary though. Out of the box, the colors displayed on screen were a bit too saturated and contrasty for my liking, but Samsung gives you all the settings you need to adjust the screen to your liking. When viewing film and TV shows, I employed Samsung's filmmaker mode found in picture settings. 
This, combined with turning off all the extra processing, such as DJI compensation and picture clarity, gave me the best picture quality with deep, deep black levels I never expected from a VA panel. Like really, just look at those black levels. It almost feels in person like the device is shut off. When switching to gaming, the Arc automatically switches to game HDR mode. This is what gives you access to that 165Hz AMD FreeSync Premium Pro support, gaming HDR, and that one millisecond response time. But to get there, you'll need a partner in your Odyssey, a capable enough graphics card. While I didn't have that capable graphics card partner in my journey, what I did have was the Nintendo Switch, and running Super Smash Bros. in glorious 60 FPS on this giant screen. Also, Forza 5 off my Xbox One? I've never been sucked in more to a racing sim. And on top of that, running Sleeping Dogs off of Steam on my PC with the 4K resolution textures added? I really see why Samsung is dubbing this your personal gaming theater. But things can't all be about gaming and streaming content. If this is meant to be a one monitor solution, you're going to need to get some work done. And this is where things got a little rocky. But really, what's an Odyssey without some choppy waters, eh? Samsung Smart Hub is your main interface for navigating between your inputs, the built-in media apps, such as Netflix, Disney+, YouTube, as well as gaming directly from the cloud. It's really cool that cloud gaming is supported out of the box. You just pair an Xbox, PlayStation, or supported Bluetooth controller, and you're set with services such as Xbox, Google Stadia, and GeForce Now being supported. I didn't have a Bluetooth controller on hand to test it, but I do believe it's a worthwhile addition by Samsung. You can use the Arc remote to get around the menu, but the Arc dial is just a bit more fun. Press the Arc dial menu button and you're presented with quick access to quick settings, flex move screen, home, multi-view, and game bar 2.0. Flex move screen allows you to control the resolution and screen ratio to your liking. Once selected, rotate the dial to resize your display and move it around the screen. It's easy, quick, intuitive, and works both in landscape mode as well as cockpit mode. I will admit though, I didn't really need to use flex move screen so much. With so much screen real estate, it felt a bit silly to just leave an ambient backdrop and a small screen placed wherever you wanted. Though, it is a feature I appreciate as the background can be customized and the colors match up with whatever is being displayed on your screen. Multi-view though, is what really helps you get things going. With several configurations, as you can see here, you can customize the display to provide your ideal setup. But if your ideal setup was utilizing multiple HDMI sources, I'm sorry to say you can't. Same goes for running streaming apps not built by Samsung like Netflix or HBO Max. The Arc only allows for one HDMI input to be displayed at a time. I hope Samsung addresses this in a firmware update as it's an odd choice to limit your display to only one source especially when the One Connect box allows you to plug in up to four. Dreams of watching a movie on one side of the screen from Disney Plus while gaming or doing work on the other are just not available, and I think the Arc suffers a little bit for it. However, stacking screens that do support multi-view, the Arc functions flawlessly. There are a few small scaling quirks when it comes to connecting your PC or Mac, but that's more of an issue of those operating systems not having native support for such a massive rotating screen that allows you to choose different resolutions and screen sizes. So I wouldn't really chalk that up as Samsung's fault. Using the Arc dial to navigate within a chosen app, for example, in the YouTube app, once it's been selected as the display you want to focus on, you can pause, play, or scrub through the video all with the Arc dial. It's smart, feels futuristic, and I'll say it now, the future is spinning wheels. And speaking of spinning, rotating the screen to what Samsung calls cockpit mode is surprisingly simple for such a massive display and also a great way to expand on your productivity. It's incredible to see the screen towering over you like this and having up to three windows stacked on top of each other never felt like information overload. You know what? Maybe the future isn't spinning wheels. Maybe it's vertical. Well, if the future is all about vertical, innovation, immersion, and rotating dials, are we all aboard this arc? For me, the key issue, aside from that asking price of $3,500, which by no means is a small amount, is that it's not enough to be a standalone arc. Ultimately, in my experience, I find that it works best if you have a partner in your journey, just like life. Whether that's an additional remote, a friend, a second display, a pair of subwoofers, or a top-end graphics card. That said, 
If you have the disposable income, don't mind only selecting one HDMI input and have a friend to help you set up, well, Samsung will take you on a voyage like you've never seen before or heard. Seriously, that sound system is just that good. Thank you for watching. Do consider liking and subscribing to our channel if you found this helpful. For a more detailed breakdown of the ARC, head to muo.com where you can check out the full review along with giveaways, gadget advice, and everything to help you make use of your tech.